Namaste everyone, this is Stephen from YogaWorks, welcome to your practice. And today we're having a look at yoga for men. You might think, isn't yoga for everybody? Yes, of course it is. But if you look at the vast majority of people in uh, public yoga classes, and then it's going to be mostly women. And sometimes as a man, it's a little bit hard to just walk into this bigger group and maybe naturally a little bit tighter, or a little bit less flexible at the very least and it is really hard to feel like the odd one out like you're not good at something naturally and then you look around and all these other people are uh, often crazily flexible and i've been one of those uh, men you know that uh, yoga teachers come past you know with this pitiful look in their eyes bringing more and more blocks and straps and blankets and pillows and some of these poses were just not um, not achievable for me some of them still aren't so what I'm doing today is not that if you're a lady you can't do this class but what I'm doing today is um, enhancing the some of the natural capabilities that some men will have of course it's a huge generalization this is not going to be true for everyone but in my own experience I found I had less problems with some of the strength-based poses, think plank, chaturanga, uh, even headstand and crow and those kind of things. And anything else that required the hip flexibility, shoulders, back bends, was more of a, was more of a stretch. It was sometimes uh, not possible for me immediately. So I'm going to enhance the things that um, come a bit naturally for many men. And we're going to introduce some of the things that might be a little bit challenging in an accessible way. So first of all, let's get started with a little bit of hip mobility stuff. I'm going to turn to the right and come into 90-90 leg position. So that basically is just the right shin is parallel to the short edge of the mat. The right thigh is parallel to the long edge of the mat. So we had a 90 degree angle in the front leg and in the back leg we're getting the same and then just lift the chest up a little bit. And if you feel like there's some tightness around the hips that prevents you from lifting up, then you might need to move a little bit, lean a little bit to the right, which is totally fine. If that's what you need to do, then just do that. And then just spend a moment here in this setup, which is really great to start to um, warm up the mobility around the hips. We're also going to focus a bit less on flexibility in the session and a bit more on mobility, which is whichever range we have, at least can we have full strength and control in that range. And then of course, over time, we're working on increasing that range as well as increasing our control in the range. And I'll just keep the feet where they are so they're quite wide and just shift the hips like windscreen wipe the knees over to the other side you might have to adjust a little bit but more or less you should be in the right position so 90 90 all the angles in your joints the knees the ankles the hips 90 degrees sit up as tall as you can and take a few breaths the more the breath can relax the more the body will will notice that uh, this is actually a shape I can relax in and then give you more and more access to it over time as you repeat this and then a couple of times move from side to side without moving the feet you can use your hands behind you for a bit of support and all we're doing is we're rotating the thigh bones and the hip sockets just to invite a little bit of movement capability there it's often uh, quite a tight area for a lot of men, at least in my experience. Not all of us, but in general, that's often what I see in my yoga classes and in my own practice. Nice, release that and come into plank pose. So stack your shoulders directly above the wrists and then just have a look that your hips are not sagging down or they're not piking up. So have the lengthen the tailbone a little bit back so we're engaging the abdominals here 
and then get a sense of pushing the mat down with your hands. You can round the upper back a little bit, but we don't want to do this too excessively. And then often people's planks are a little bit short. Have a look, my heels are way over my toes. So if I walk the toes a bit back, then the heels are more above the, the base of the toes, which is gonna give you a better core workout just by holding this plank for a moment. And then keep that, lift the right foot a little bit off the mat and then bring the right knee towards the right elbow without needing to touch it. We're keeping the core strong. Step the right foot back. Lift the left foot and squeeze left knee forward to his left elbow. No need to touch. And step it back. We'll do one more on each side. Lift the right foot. Squeeze right knee forward, pushing the mat down with your hands. Right foot back. Lift the left foot left knee forward and then release that lift the hips up and back downward facing dog and then you can lower your knees for a moment just to have a look i'm going to modify downward facing dog because often shoulders a little bit tight hamstrings might be a little bit tight so i'm going to show you how to make the down dog quite accessible first i'm going to hold onto the edges of the mat with my hands and then I'm going to lift the hips and place the feet quite wide, also on the edges of the mat. And then I'm going to lengthen the hands and the feet away from each other. It's almost like I'm trying to stretch the mat a little bit longer. And this is a great first down dog to have a bit more space around the hips and around the shoulders. And then if this still feels too restrictive then just bend the knees a little bit and you'll find there's a lot more space to lengthen the spine when you give a bit of slack to your hamstrings take a moment here it feels nice to press the chest towards the knees a little bit just to get into upper back often quite a tight area for men around the upper back the shoulders the neck the chest so we're working into that right here. And then if you're tired, you can always lower the knees for a moment. I'm going to introduce you to a really good stretch and twist, which goes from down dog and gets into the tight area of the upper back and the shoulders. So we're coming to more normal down dog with the hands about shoulder width apart. You can always move the hands slightly wider and turn the fingers out for tighter shoulders or should I say stronger shoulders and then see if this gives you a bit more space. Walk the feet in a little bit closer than normal and then with your right hand reach for the left ankle and pull your chest through to the left for a moment. I'm still pushing that left hand down a lot and I'm lengthening the heels down towards the mat. Even if you need to bend your knees a little bit to achieve this, that's okay. Right hand place it down. Left hand reach it towards the right ankle and pull the chest through. I'm stretching the heels down. I'm pushing the right hand down. Maybe you can even look under the right armpit. Slowly release. Normal downward facing dog. And then walk your feet forward to the front of the mat. Bend your knees a little bit and then roll up to standing really slowly. Nice. One round of sun salutations. Here we go to warm all parts of the body up. Inhale, lift the arms, lift the chest. Exhale, fold forward, soften your knees which will feel much better in the whole back body, especially in the hamstrings. Inhale, flat back. This is great to strengthen your back, but you need to lift quite high to feel that effect. So try that, lift a little bit higher than normal, and then hands down, step the right foot back into a high lunge, and then lift up. You can always bend that back knee a little bit to get around some tightness in the front of the right hip. And then if you like, 
You can lift the arms up for a moment. And then lower the hands down. Inhale, step back to plank. So we've been in plank before. Wiggle the toes back to find that good distance that maximizes your core engagement. Feel the strength around the shoulders, the chest. And then lower the knees down. Shift your shoulder a bit forward, but keep the belly lifted. And then bend your elbows a bit. Just hold for three, two, one. And lower down excellent way to strengthen the triceps and the chest in that Chaturanga position. Nice. From here, hands on the shoulders, and then slide the hands a little bit further back. Roll the shoulders back. Draw the shoulder blades down your back. Lift the head, lift the chest, and if it feels good, you can press into the hands to lift a little bit higher, but don't go to any impossible ranges. Just stay somewhere where it feels good, it's strengthening, it's challenging, and you can still breathe. Slowly lower down. Tuck your toes. If you want, you can push straight up to plank here. There's quite a lot of core and shoulder strength. Down a dog or just make a plan to join us in down dog, however you like. Inhale, in down dog. Exhale, step the right foot through. If it doesn't go all the way through, then just help with your hands. Sometimes we're a little bit tight in the back body, which will prevent you from easily stepping through. Bend the back knee a little bit. Lift the arms. We're back in our high lunge. Take a moment to inhale, and on the exhale, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, rise, take it all the way up. Stretch through the fingertips. Exhale, hands to heart center. One more round, we'll start with the other leg. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, take your time, fold forward. Remember to soften the knees a bit. Inhale, flat back, push the shins with the hands and feel your back getting stronger here. It's the main benefit of this pose. And then hands down, left foot, step it back. Keep the legs strong and then if you can lift the hands, do that for high lunge. This is too much. You can always place the back knee down, low lunge, which requires a little bit less balancing and leg strength. And then lower the hands. Inhale, find your plank again. Pressing the mat down with your hands. Your core, your legs are working to keep your body lifted against the pull of gravity. We lowered knees down first, but if you find, if you didn't have any problems with that in the previous time, then you can try to keep the knees up. So choose whichever one works, it's fine. Lean the shoulders forward, bend your elbows a little bit. Hover for three, two, one. Lower all the way down. So that was a full Chaturanga, which we held for a little bit longer. It's strong work. Hands a bit further back than under the shoulders. Roll shoulders back, chest is proudly forward. Shoulder blades down the back, look forward. Cobra, don't lift the hips. Lower back down. Tuck your toes, strengthen the legs and the belly. See if you can push up straight into a plank. Exhale, down dog, or just join us there, however you like. Feel free to bend the knees again, lengthen the spine. Inhale. Exhale, step the left foot forward, help with your hands if needed. Little bend in the back knee will help you to lift up with more ease. Lift the arms, high lunge. Exhale, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, lift all the way up, press your feet down, lift and lengthen. Exhale, hands to the heart. Just like this with a simple sequence, it generates quite a lot of heat and readiness in the body, an excellent way to warm up. Nice, from here, inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, fold forward. Now, wiggle the feet a little bit wider. 
You can turn the toes out a little bit and then bend your knees, squat. So this is often a bit of a challenging position, especially if your ankle, knee and hip mobility is um, a work in progress, which it always is, of course. So if that's the case, then just lift the knees a little bit, which will allow you at least to stay in the pose. Do your best to lift the chest as best as you can. Or if that's possible to do that with the heels down, then do it with the heels down. And then you can walk your feet a little bit back. The two crow pose is one of the most basic arm balances. And I see um, often for men, this is quite an accessible pose, which is not always the case for everybody. So if you're happy in crow, then give it a try. I'm placing the knees quite high on my upper arms, bending the elbows a bit so I have a bit of a shelf, and then lean forward until your feet get lighter and then maybe lift one foot, lift the other foot, balance for a moment. And you can step back wherever you want. If you want to get fancy, you can hop back straight into Chaturanga. Nice. Downward facing dog is where we will meet. Good step right foot forward. Soften the left knee a little bit, lift up into that high lunge like we did before. And then here, take your left arm in front of the chest, straighten the elbow, and with the right arm, pull the left arm in. So this is a version of eagle pose, but sometimes if you have stronger shoulders and chest and upper back, then this is not going to be very accessible. You'll lack a lot of space. So this is a more spacious option and also a really great way to stretch the outside of that shoulder joint on the left. With the left arm, I'm pushing out a little bit against the right forearm. Release that. Now reach the hands back and see if you can clasp your hands together. If this is not available, then just don't panic. Grab a little belt or a strap or something similar. Hold it with the palms facing up and then pull the strap apart. Actually, I can clasp my hands, but I really like the feeling of doing this with the strap so much more spacious in the upper back and the back of the shoulders. So I'm going to stay with the belt for this time. I'm lifting my hands as far from the lower back as possible. And then release that. If you're using a strap, place it off to the side. Inhale to plank. So we're back here. Exhale, choose your chaturanga with the knees down or with the knees up. I'm going to show with the knees down this time. Lean the shoulders forward, keep the belly engaged, bend the elbows slowly, and lower down. Roll shoulders back, chest is forward, arch your back. Lower back down, plank pushes up, downward facing dog to return. Take a breath. And then step left foot forward when you're ready. Lift up into high lunge. Take the right arm in front of the chest over to the left. Hook the left arm. I like it sort of halfway the forearm. So I have good leverage. Don't bend your right elbow. But instead push the right arm out against the left forearm like it wants to escape. This is another version of eagle arms, which is more accessible if you have a bit stronger shoulders or with less space in the joints there to do this. Another breath or so, and then release. Of course, we're holding this high lunge for quite a long time which is really beneficial as well to open the front of the hips and to strengthen the lower body. Nice, grab the strap if you like. I really enjoyed the feeling 
I'm holding the strap instead of the hands, so I'm pulling the strap apart. My palms are facing up, and I'm moving the shoulders back. And this just feels so much more spacious than trying to clasp the fingers together, squeezing everything together. This feels a bit more beneficial, and it's going to be achievable for more people. And then release that strap and go off to the side. One more time, inhale, step into plank. I'm going to do full chaturanga with knees up, but you can choose any version you like, even if you skip this thing all together. Chest goes forward, bend your elbows, lower down. Last cobra pose, roll shoulders back, broaden the heart, keep your elbows close. Exhale, shift back into child's pose. I'm moving the knees a bit further apart and I'm just going to fold over the legs. When I first did this pose, it was actually totally inaccessible. My hips were lifted way off the heels and I could only fold about this way. What really helped is then to lift the floor up by stacking fists and placing the forehead on that and then over time my hips can now reach the heels but if yours don't then you're still in a good place it's a great resting spot and if this one feels, still feels terrible after the modifications then find another resting place it's totally fine And as men, it's really hard to be the odd one out, not being able to reach something. I mean, it's one thing if you can't lift a heavy weight in the gym, you feel like you could just keep trying and um, showing up. But it's another thing to be the only one that can touch the toes or do some kind of yoga pose in a group class. That seems to be a bigger challenge for us to deal with. That's why I've put this class together to give you something accessible and still quite challenging to work with. And then slowly lift up. Swing your legs out in front of you and prepare for bridge pose. Often the teachers will say feet hip distance apart and parallel. I would say if you're new to this or you're a little bit restricted, then feel free to open the feet a little bit wider, have them a bit further away from your hips and even turn the toes out a little bit. Nothing terrible is going to happen when you do that, but you'll probably feel you have a bit more space to lift up. And then if you want to, or when you're ready, I mean, lift the hips up. If you want to, that didn't make any sense and then push your feet down to lift the hips up and here we're strengthening the glutes, the hamstrings and the lower back muscles in this bridge pose. Often teachers will say clasp your hands together but then we might run into the same problem that we've had before so if that's you feel free to grab your strap, place it under your hips and this time I would say have the palms facing up and pull that strap apart. That actually feels amazing for the shoulders, for the upper back, for the chest, and leaves quite a bit of space for the hips and the torso to lift through. Pull the strap apart with your hands. If you don't have a strap nearby, you can even hold the sides of your mat, which will have a similar effect. And then release that, lower the hips down. Take a moment to just release all the effort that we've just done. Nice. So we'll end with a nice supine hip opener pose. I'll give you a couple of options. Place your right ankle on the left knee. And if you really feel a good stretch on the outside, of that right hip, then you might just stay here, maybe even slightly press that right knee away from you. 
If you can't feel anything yet, you need a little bit more than lift the left foot off the mat. Thread your right arm through the legs and hold your left thigh or your left shin while still pressing the right knee away from you. So that's, this is pigeon pose on your back. So if pigeon feels a little bit restricted, which it often does with uh, tighter hips, then this might be a better variation. So you can even do this in a group class. The teacher says pigeon pose, and instead you do this version on your back. That's totally fine. Release that. Right foot down, left ankle on the right knee. Remember, if this feels like a good stretch, you just stay here. Maybe walk the foot a bit closer, maybe slightly press that knee away. Or if this does nothing for you, then of course you have to go a little bit further, which is lifting right foot, threading the left arm through the gap in the legs and holding. You can hold the right thigh a bit closer. Or you can hold the right shin if it's within your reach. And then lie down. If your head feels like it needs to lift, then you can always put something underneath the back of the head. And then slowly release, straighten both legs out, turn the palms open, straighten your arms as well. Wiggle around to get really comfortable on your back. Here's the hardest pose, sometimes really hard for us to let go and to surrender. Especially men feel like they always need to power through and find a solution and solve all the problems. And that when we turn our attention away or when we start to relax, that things will fall apart. Now practice this. Relax and notice nothing is falling apart. Everything is still fine. Even when you step back and surrender for a moment. Feel the gentle movements of breath. Feel the restful state in your body after this practice. And feel how your mind might even let go a little bit as well. Give up its constant push and search and wanting. If you allow it. You can always take a longer break if you have more time. Just stay here for a few more minutes will be really beneficial. But if this was all you had time for, then wiggle your hands and your feet. Bend your knees, roll over onto one side. And then just push up back into a seated position. Place hands together at the heart. Touch your hands to your forehead, to your heart center, and bow to yourself on the mat. Namaste, everyone. Thank you so much for practicing, for giving this a try. Well done for all the men who showed up and who are um, modifying their practice, who are using the things they are good at, that they're naturally strong at, and who are chipping away at some other things that are a bit more of a challenge, which we all have, to be honest, whether you're a man or a woman, I don't think there's anyone who's not challenged by some of these yoga poses. So well done for showing up. If you like this class, then give this channel a subscribe or a like, or maybe share this class with somebody who could use it, maybe one of the men in your life who's been resisting going to a first yoga class or giving this a try, and this will be a great introduction to get started and who knows what happens after that. Thank you and see you soon.